Yo, the last few anime reviews that I did on this channel were big long love letters to some productions that are great and are worth your time, but I'm going to try and be a little bit more concise about this one. Beastars is a fantastic achievement in animation. I feel blessed to have come across this, and that's due in part to me really struggling to find any anime that I've actually been inspired to keep watching. I feel like an arsehole because I've watched a shit ton of really, really good and really, really suck ass anime in the past, but now my consumption of anime has drastically gone down. Currently, I'm watching My Hero Academia and that one show where sex is like the entire plot. Like, th this is the anime resume of an arsehole. I am an arsehole. It's, <laughs> I, I accept this reality. Feel free to leave me a recommendation down below. I clearly need one. I'm trying to finish Psychopaths and Full Metal Alchemist, but uh, I digress. I was having a conversation with my friend and it went like this. Hey there, friend. Due to a combination of my height, weight, gender, and to a lesser extent, but still a genuine consideration, my race, I at times feel like a big and scary bloke. I hate this, but I do wonder if I should just start powerlifting and embrace the fact that I could be quite monstrous if I suddenly decided that violence and abuse of stature was something I was into. I'm absolutely not into that. I am what many would call a pussy poos. And they go, gee whiz, Rob. Sounds like this guy in Beastars. And I think, ah, not the first time I've been called a furry. <laughs> Doesn't hurt any less though, youch. Nevertheless, upon the recommendation of this friend and a couple of internet personalities, word up scambo the reviews, I've found one of my favourite shows all year. I've started rating media on its capacity to make me scream. Prior to Beastars, this one episode from Steven Universe Future and this one episode from Bojack Horseman were the last things to have me actually screaming. However, I'm now pleased to say that Beastars, with its incredibly lovable and well-written characters, all placed within this wild anthro animal world, tells a story that indeed had me literally screaming at my screen. Let's cover some things that it does well without spoilers, and then we'll get into some of the <clears throat> meatier stuff later. Beastars is a high school murder mystery thriller action drama romance, and yes, it's got some doggies. <coughs> please, please hang on, please, this is nothing to do with furries. Give me a moment. I want to explain something. Put down your pitchforks. The anthropomorphized animal aspect of the show is crucial and brilliant. It takes all of the themes and the storylines possible with the genres that I just listed out, and then tells the story using animals as a lens to enhance the possibility of what can be done within the narrative. There are so many gorgeous little details and character eccentricities that only exist as a result of the furry setting that they are in. Birds need their flying license. There's a racial divide between carnivores and herbivores, and they even have species-specific pornography. Now, at this point, some of you in the room should be going, yeah! Hold your ho- wait, there's no horses in this show. Hold your doggies. Hold it! Sorry, my housemate was making some chicken tendies. What's going on in here? Let's address the story. The story is- what is the story? The story is about Lugosi, or- Lugosi. 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 It's about him and his experience in a mixed species high school. He's going through the standard coming of age fair of like, school life is getting harder, girls are getting prettier, and somebody's murdering people at school? What? Legosi is a big old wolf boy. He is caught between the ideals of keeping himself to himself and living the simple life, or following his gut and exploring newfound feelings of romance, justice, and just a sense of being in the world around him. His journey from quiet nobody to a headstrong hero is one of the most well illustrated and enjoyable examples of the hero's journey. And I adore this boy! The supporting cast and foils are for the most part incredibly charming accents to this journey, and I get a weird fuzzy feeling when all the different friendship groups come into play. You've got you've got the, the dorm room doggies who are swell, and then you've got the, the group of like backstage theatre kids who are like gay swell, and then you've got the meat lads! What? All of the odd pack dynamics lets our hero strut his stuff in a variety of crowds, and it's a curious experience watching him adapt to his surroundings. I have a limited scope of anime, I'm not a true anti-tuber, and as a result I have fairly misinformed opinions of things, but I have a, a, one misinformed opinion that I've had for a long time is that 3D animation makes bad anime. And I now understand that this is bogus, for the most case it's poor use of 3D animation makes for noticeably yucky looking anime, but Beastars gets a big old W right out the bat 
that by having a 3D world, maybe a partially 3D world that is just a breeze to look at. I'm sure that it can be done well in 2D animation, but personally I love the scope of the characters in 3D. A big plot point is that many people in society, or in this animal society, feel threatened at the prospect of having to cohabitate with like much larger imposing carnivorous beings and this is telegraphed really well in a 3D medium. I'm just going to be transparent and say that I've lifted this fun fact right out of Scamboli Review's video, please check it out, but just to expand on this, they apparently used some kind of special voice acting technique where instead of sticking the VAs in booths to record, they had them act out the scenes like in physical theater. And it took me a while to, like I, I had to go back and rewatch the episodes to really see it. But I did notice a kind of tangible dynamic that it adds to the audio. I'm not usually a big critic for voice acting, but I do love the ambition and the nuance that little things like this add to the production value. Whoa, this is your minor spoiler alert! If you don't want some pretty minor spoilers, then skip to the time on screen. I mean, like, we're just gonna be looking into some characters, it's nothing- it's nothing mega, but, you know, if you want to be completely unsullied, then- then skip. Y'all gone? Okay. I just wanted to put a bit of time aside to talk about the other main characters. I initially hated Luis, or Louis, or... Louise? <laughs> I hated him because he had such just a raging temper all the time. He was like Bakugo. He was always yelling and I don't know what he's angry about. <laughs> At least in My Hero Academia, people are conscious about how annoying and loud Bakugo is. But in this universe, people love the stag boy. They, they think he's the hottest thing. He seemed to just put ambition before kindness at every single opportunity, and I really wanted him to just chill the fuck out. But then you get further into the story, and you find out that he has a ooh, dark and mysterious past, oh my god! And you get this whole other appreciation for his behaviour, and I know that's kind of what the character arc is meant to do, there's nothing particularly special about having an asshole evolve into an asshole with a good reason, but it's still adding to the list of appreciable characters, so another thumbs up for Beastars. Also, a colossal compliment that I have to give to the narrative was giving the topic of sex some meaning and plot significance. For a type of storytelling that is marketed to teens and adults, it feels like sex as an entire narrative plot point has just been slashed out of a lot of stories. It is, like... <laughs> These are the words of a very horny man, but... <laughs> Listen, there was one plot point in Darling in the Franks uh, that was all surrounding reproduction and sex, and it was absolutely nothing to do about teenagers being horny, and it was everything to do about knowledge and power and just having something for themselves, and this was a fantastic contextual way to address a very real thing that these teens becoming young adults would be dealing with. In Beastars, we have an important main character who f fucks. She gets around, and while this is initially a setup for just like a loud character quirk, I love the way that the narrative weaves this into a topic about her self-worth and the balance of power in this odd animal world that they inhabit, but also in a very human sense. It's a very human thing to need to feel secure and in control and just to be seen for who you truly are, and for this character, Haru the Dwarf Rabbit, Sex became a vehicle for her to tear down preconceptions and facilitate an environment where they felt like they had a tangible sense of self. And when you're just like, horny boy watching furries boink, a bit of storytelling alongside that is a really amazing embellishment. Is there something wrong with me? <laughs> there is a lot more that could be said. Looking back at just how many tense moments, grand character arcs, and genuine climaxes they squeezed into just 12 episodes is quite astounding. I don't know if this is just in my head, but I feel like there are a fair few people dodging this because something about the anthropomorphized animals reminds them of... Master, screw me onto your big dick and use me as a cock sleeve. And I get that, I do, but you'd be missing out on one of the best productions in recent anime history. If you get the chance, try an episode or two, because... <laughs> it's... it's... it's real good and the opening slaps. But, you know what? Just let me know what you think. Congratulations, Beastars. You've got me saying, I'm not a furry, but all over again. Peace. Alarm goes off at seven, and you start up town. You put in your eight hours, 
for the powers that have always been till it's 5 p.m. Then you go downtown where the folks are broke. You go downtown where your life's a joke. You go downtown where you buy your token. You go home to Skid Row. Home to Skid Row.